Hello and welcome to our new webinar. Today, you get to know more about the Cyrus Academy. So we will give you an introduction what the new cybersecurity standards and regulations expect with respect to competence management, training people, and also how we are going to solve that and our approach behind. So my name is Manuel Sandler. I'm yeah, more or less responsible here at Cyrus for our technical project, the whole consultancy. If now a background of more than eight years in the automotive industry, from function safety, over cyber security and related topics. And today I'm not alone. Yeah, thank you, Manuel. Um, my name is Steve Langgraf, hiring manager and recruiting manager here at Cyrus Consulting. I started my career in uh, business administration with a, a master and a bachelor degree and already focused on some uh, competence management and uh, of course recruiting as well so after that my career started with uh, recruiting specialists in the automotive industry um, for embedded systems positions so i got familiar with a lot of positions and uh, roles in the automotive industry all over the world and uh, since 2020 i'm responsible at cyrus to grow the team and to coordinate the ACP framework, which is uh, um, a basic framework for uh, cybersecurity competences in the automotive world. And uh, we want to address this today with you. Thank you, Steve. So whenever you want to join us, you will come in contact with them. But that's another story. <laughs> Let's start. Let's bring everybody on the same page. What is the current situation we have at the moment in the automotive industry? and especially related to cybersecurity. So there are huge challenges, more or less all of us are facing at the moment. So more and more non-automotive companies, external companies are entering the market, startups with different solutions, with actually no experience in automotive and especially not in cybersecurity, but we need to cooperate with them. On the other side, or as an additional point, when we talk about costs, it's still not clear how much implementing cybersecurity costs for projects, for organizations. And in addition to that, there's actually not the know-how, how to do that and not the competence. So it's a complete new field still for everyone here. And our cars get more and more fancy. We have more and more features. Based on that, also the number of attack vectors. So the potential attacks are increasing. And we need to handle all these challenges, but on the other side, there's also a huge pressure. So from a cybersecurity point of view, the increased legislation, the new ISO standard, the new UN regulation, which we also touch shortly later. Also, especially in the last years, the rising demand for privacy protection, for example, according to GDPR. So people take more and more care about the data and what happens with the data. And of course, they also need to be protected. Additionally, Cybersecurity is, yeah, let's say it becomes part of the expectations from the customers and from the end users. So it's already expected that it's part of the overall vehicle life cycle. And if something happens, it's still not 100% clear how the product liability or how the risks of product liability are distributed across all the different participants. So we see it's a lot of challenges and a lot of pressure. And we have it already here. One point is the missing competence or the missing experience. And if that's your part. Right. Thanks, Manuel, for that great overview. So in that situation where we have a lot of challenges, uh, a lot of pressure, we thought about how we can address this. And um, I'm also quite sure some of you have the ISO standard already on uh, their desks and read through it and don't know how to handle that because the ISO standard is not saying exactly what to do. So we came up with the idea um, to create a training to address this for a variety of people and for all participants in the automotive industry. That don't mean it's just for developers, it's also made for, for project managers, function owners, software test engineers, everybody that get in touch with cybersecurity. And in that case, of course, it's quite important as well to have a certification from an independent partner. And this is uh, what we implemented as well. 
Um, of course, to all these things we have created here, the training as well as the certification, more and more questions come up during the last weeks and months as the pressure became higher. And uh, we want to answer those questions today, like uh, what is the level one training, the level two training, is it necessary um, to have level one before level two? Um, what is that ACP framework you're talking about? Actually, I can uh, give you a sneak preview. This is the fundamental and the basis on what we build our training. Um, and we will talk about that today. And of course, the certification, at least. Yeah, after training, it's always coming a certification to check what you have learned and to prove your skills. We will show you what it is and what you can expect from our Cyrus Academy. Back to Manu. And Steve, you mentioned that there's more and more pressure and one pressure is based or raised on all the standards and regulations. And as you can see here, it's more than just the usually mentioned ISO SAE 21454 or the UNR. The more and more things that need to be considered and the stif different technical deeps, but in the end, it, it's about one part of the puzzle. And everyone who is affected in cybersecurity directly, indirectly, will be affected by that. But you see, it's quite complex, but let's stay for the 21434 and the UNR 155 and start first, actually, what is a regulation or to answer the question, what is a regulation? So, Compared to a standard, a regulation is made by the government and it's legally binding. It's not nice to have, it's not an add-on, it's something that needs to be fulfilled where compliance is mandatory. In the context of automotive cybersecurity, we have two regulations we need to be aware. And probably you are aware since you're attending this, this webinar. One is the UNR 155, a regulation for cybersecurity management system. And the other one, let's say related, is a UNR 156 for software update management systems. So both of them are already published, are, um, yeah, need to be applied for new vehicle types July this year and for all vehicles in two years. And if you're not compliant to those regulations, this will end in a sales ban in more than in the 54 UNEC member countries. So missing compliance results in that manufacturers are not allowed to sell their cars. So there is no higher pressure than the financial pressure in the end. On the other side, we have the standards. So are they, those are made by the industry under control of a standardization body like the ISO, and they can seen as a state-of-the-art reference. Compliance here is not mandatory, but you need to follow uh, state of the art, and actually that's usually the best basis. And here, I already mentioned it, the ISO SAE 21434 for road vehicles, cybersecurity engineering, the new Bible. And for those of you who are from the functional safety areas, it's actually the, the cybersecurity version of the 26262. Also for the UNR 156, Maybe not that known, but also on the creation is the ISO 24089 for software update engineering. And the important point of these both standards, they can prepare for compliance and justification also for the UN regulation. So that's the starting point also to be able to be com or to be compliant to those regulations. Again, which are mandatory for um, getting the cars on the street. Um, but it's the vehicle manufacturers who are selling the cars. And of course, the OEMs are the legally entities for registering the cybersecurity management assessment and for the homogeneity of their vehicles. So you can say, okay, that's just up to the OEMs. But that's only half of the truth because there's one important requirement in the UNR which states that vehicle manufacturer shall identify and manage or the vehicle type being approved, supplier-related risks. So that means they are responsible that the supplier fulfill this regulation as well. So the supplier must provide evidences to the OEM and to support the type approval. And in this context, new specialist knowledge, 
associated practical know-how and systematic advanced education will be critical so that companies are able to fulfill this regulation. And I can give you some dedicated requirements from the standard and the regulation, which show quite well why competence management is not important. So in the 21434, we have a simple requirement which states that the organization shall foster and maintain a strong cybersecurity culture. And the organization shall ensure that persons which, to which cybersecurity roles and responsibilities are assigned have the competence to do their job. So the, you need an evidence of competence, oh, sorry, and awareness management and continuous improvement. And also the UNR states that the organization sh shall demonstrate that their cybersecurity management system considers cybersecurity, which includes the establishment, maintenance of a cybersecurity culture and awareness. So we need an evidence of competence. We need a supporting cybersecurity culture and a competence management, which considers role and functions behind it. That's a clear, clear statement from both the ISO and the UNR. And again, that's part of the compliance, which is in the end a precondition to be able to sell cars in the future. And actually, we all know, and that's all we are struggling, also we are, on our side, cybersecurity is a new discipline in the automotive industry. There are almost no persons who have an experience of 10, 20 years. It's even good if you find someone who has one year of practical experience. And it's a new discipline, but it's affecting everything else. It's not something standalone or an add-on. And I would like to show you that based on the coffee, the four key trends which are existing in the industry, which is connectivity, connectivity and digitalization, electric vehicles, autonomous driving, and shared mobility. And all, all of those four key trends are directly impacted by security. For example, connect, um, connectivity, digitalization, we have a huge exchange of data. We future, we will have software updates over the air without any connection to the garage. This is a huge interface from the outside, but of course it needs to be protected. Otherwise, you might have the wrong software on the car or manipulated software. Or if you look at autonomous driving, so this is highly safety critical. People manipulate uh, the software here, then actually people can die. And it's getting more and more complex. And more and more complex means bigger space for potential failures, which could be a weakness, which can again be exploited from a security point of view. Or electric vehicles. We need an, a new infrastructure which contains charging stations. You want to pay directly your, your power, your current for loading. Also, that needs to be protected. They are uh, private and financial data exchange for that. Or shared mobility is another example. And for example, here in Munich, we have a company for shared mobilities and you can open and start a car via a smartphone app. And the smartphone itself, it's not developed in the automotive context, neither the app but it is then directly interfaced to the vehicle. So you see, cybersecurity is not something special or standalone, it's affecting different areas in different ways. And as usual in the automotive development, the later we find issues, we find weaknesses, um, the more expensive it becomes and the more we need to correct. So if you see early in the development that we might have some weaknesses even before the design freeze, and then we can just adapt the hardware or integrate additional measures. When our product is already in the field, maybe used by 10,000 persons or in 10,000 cars, we need to have a recall for all these cars, we need to adapt the software, the hardware, we need to roll it out again, which becomes much, much more expensive. And we need to be aware that the number of errors also might increase since yeah, hackers also do not stop. They are developing themselves, getting new tools, new features, etc. And in this context, there's a nice statement from ENISA. So ENISA is the, U the European Union's cybersecurity agency. And they made an, a report last year, a cybersecurity report, which came to the conclusion that the absence of sufficient cybersecurity knowledge and expertise is a major barrier that hampers the integration of security in the automotive sector. 
So they analyzed the situation in the market last year and they said that one of the key thing is the missing knowledge and the missing expertise. So we had those discussions already since a few years and our approach to solve that started early 2019 in a cooperation with the Global Year One to develop a comprehensive cybersecurity training by integrating as much input as possible, doing surveys, getting different reviews for the content, making pilots. So involving in the end more than 70 people to, yeah, to contribute to this training over several years to have now the set we have. And because we saw it depending on different people, different roles have different expectations to that. But we also want to cover all of them and to get all these ideas in a comprehensive solution. That was our approach at that day. Now you can say, okay, we have books, we have material, and also we have a book, but related to that. But actually, there are different reasons why this might not be enough, or why reading a YouTube or why watching YouTube channel is not enough. So we need to understand the complexity of cybersecurity and its impact on different areas. It's not just the development, it's not just the software part. It's the whole product life cycle up to the HR department who need to find new experts. It's also not something you can put on top. You cannot just hire a cybersecurity engineer and say, hey, do the work. Um, it plays actually a crucial role in the daily work of all engineers. And yeah, you also need to define, actually, what are the risks for your projects, for your organization? It's something different if you're a car manufacturer, if you're a tier two supplier. If you're developing ECU, so if you're developing software or sensors. And again, we have a new standard, a new regulation where compliance is mandatory. So that's one aspect. Another aspect is that actually technical competence is one that we have here on the right bottom. But for getting the right people who do the job, who are able to handle those challenges, you need personal competence to reflect the situation to to see, okay, what is actually right behavior, the performance competence, so the possibility also to implement your knowledge. So there are people who have a great knowledge, but they are not able to bring that into the project. And then the next part, to help others to work on that. So some kind of a social interaction competence. But there are also aspects we need to consider in this whole, in this whole idea behind. And I mentioned before, there are different roles existing. And we did also some time ago a list of potential roles we are affecting in our in our projects for with our customers. And you can see here we have at least identified ten different disciplines, which contain then two, three, four, five or more different roles. And all of the on the one hand, it's more than just a cybersecurity manager who can do everything. And it showed us that many people. They have a dedicated role, but they had no clue what cybersecurity means and to their role, to their function and different people, different roles have different expectations. And our first approach based on that was to go in two levels and two directions, have a foundation for everything, the really the basic knowledge, and then focusing more on management, going towards management, going towards engineering, because just looking at the different chapters we have, so on the left side, you see our nine chapters of our training, based on the role, the focus might be different. So a project manager is, for example, not interested in dedicated cybersecurity controls, um, but he needs to know what is what are the requirements to the management, what comes from the standards. But on the other side, a software developer, he might not be interested in the UNR155. The different roles have different needs and different expectations. And I would like to stay shortly on this whole topic. What kind of different worlds are affected then if we look at the whole product life cycle? Product life cycle shows the different phases in the life of a product, which starts or can start with a research concept and development phase. You have the product management, the whole engineering, maybe some research and universities you cooperate with, you of course the supplier, your customer, so several different stakeholders. In the next phase in the production, there are complete new different people, complete new people involved. 
the people from the plant, the production quality, additional supplier or production specific buyers who deliver uh, the tools in the plant, maybe some sourcing. So different people with complete different tasks, but also they need to be aware that their face is cybersecurity relevant. For example, the key handling and the production. The next phase is the logistic and sales phase. So we actually where the product is shipped from A to B, but also here you have sales, you have a marketing maybe involved, the logistics, some kind of third party forward companies, shipping companies, uh, retailers, which are completely out of the automotive development. So, but also here they need to protect the devices. They need to ensure that they are not manipulated or even stolen. So also here, it's an impact to cybersecurity. Maybe not, not that much than in the development, but nevertheless, they are affected and they play a role that the device, the car is secure on the street. And then on the street, of course, in the operation maintenance phase, you have the customer, the end user, service providers who provide you additional software updates or special apps for your car, service centers, insurances who might use uh, collected data from the car to adapt your monthly rate. And also here, different complete new stakeholders, complete new roles involved, but also here impact to cybersecurity. And last but not least, with the commissioning and end of support phase, where yeah, the product comes to the end of the life cycle, and also here, new persons involved. So you see, it's different persons, different roles, but cybersecurity play makes a difference or might make a difference for everyone. And therefore, this one fits all approach actually does not work. And coming back to our training, so as I said, with having all that in mind, created this foundation, the different levels and the different directions so far for level two, and which is now running for now yeah, one almost one and a half years. Actually, on our honestly quite successful. So we have more than 250 persons trained in level one last year and more than 40 in level two. New people are on the pipeline. And so the feedback so far also give you a short extract is for us overwhelming and we're quite happy. But I mentioned level one, level two and level three, but only explained level one and two, which brings again Steve into the picture. Right, thanks Manuel. So from the very beginning, um, we said we want to make a level three training as this is the moment where the one fits all solution comes to its limits and uh, very experienced people in automotive cybersecurity want to get more, they want to get deeper. And uh, of course, this target group is not that big at the moment because uh, automotive cybersecurity is a quite new thing, but uh, it will grow and will fast grow. So we already look into the future and plan a level three. Um, for all people who are looking for it, I can, uh, I'm very happy to, to announce today that we're planning such things for uh, a couple of uh, trainings like security measures or how to create security by design, even how to systematically prepare an audit or how to uh, create cybersecure software. These are our topics that we have in scope and uh, we thought, okay, that might be a little bit tough to do everything on our own because there won't be an expert or a company who knows everything in detail. So I can announce today that we are planning to open level three as an open platform for everybody who is interested um, in providing trainings. Because we know there are a lot of companies and specialists out there who um, already thought about making a training, but uh, as we know, managing trainings and uh, all the things behind the scenes is a tough thing. So we said, okay, we want to help those people and uh, provide the platform so they can concentrate on the training. And in addition to that, um, as you might have known in, in other trainings before, there's always the problem that you not can ensure that your audience are on the similar level in case of knowledge. So in the worst case, you're starting with fundamental things and basic things um, instead of making a deep dive, which is not fun for, for everybody. We said we make 
passing level two is a precondition to take part of level three. So you can ensure that all of your audience have a minimum level of automotive cybersecurity experience plus a couple of years work experience. And you can make the really fun thing with those audience. And um, this is actually the chance to get in touch with us and uh, to bring your expertise on the cybersecurity, on the, the Cyrus Academy um, to spread around the world that you are an expert. I can tell you from our perspective that this is uh, more worth it than any marketing that you ever made. Being an expert in that field um, is quite good and you can have a quite good uh, um, experience with your candidates, share knowledge, um, I can just recommend it. So if you want to do this, get in touch with us. And now back to Manuel. Okay, so we have now the different topics at different levels. Another point we mentioned at the beginning is the certification. So actually, again, to bring everybody on the same page, there is no official uh, authority or no official certification for persons. There's not an ISO 21434 certification by the ISO. There are different certifications, but even each company then provides that based on their training, based on their experience, sometimes together with certification bodies. So it's not the case that the ISO SAE provides you the dedicated certification. So personal certification at the moment does not exist. Nevertheless, um, definitely it makes sense to evaluate your training, evaluate the training content by an external company to ensure quality and to ensure that the right knowledge is transferred. And therefore, although we uh, decided to go that way in that case together with to Rheinland to provide a certification that you get the right competence based on the training, you pass that, you learn that, and that you're able to provide in an audit and an assessment of your project and evidence of competence that cybersecurity topics you are aware of. And some, since we are getting several questions also in that area, uh, let me shortly explain actually how it works and does it what, what it means. So there's an own platform. You can book your dedicated examination date. So you did the training. You said, I want to be certified. I want to have an evidence that I have the competence. You can book an examination date. You come to a platform from to and independent with um, yeah, ensuring that nobody can hack you or nobody can get your information, um, which is called PerCert. Uh, per uh, there's a dedicated tool you need to install. It's called AlphaView. Again, to ensure that only you who is doing that and that yeah, there's no cheating possible. And Based on that is taking the exam in, that's live, it's on observation, but of course remote, you can do it from home. And once you passed it, you get a certificate. Another question, the direction, actually, what are the criteria? We have level one. Here, you have an exam with 30 questions, you have a multiple choice, you 20 hour one out of four in 30 minutes. So actually it's, yeah, it's tough in the timing, but if you understood the content, that should not be an issue. And of course, you need to do the level one training before. And we have our level two, which is more extensive, 75 minutes, 50 questions. You only need 25, but of course, the content is more complicated. Um, you need more time to answer them. All right, thanks, Manu. So to sum that up, we created a holistic approach with our ACP framework, which is the fundamental basic um, and the trainings which addresses the training needs of each and every role. And as you say, you heard, it's not uh, optional. It's a mandatory thing to train and teach your, your colleagues uh, about cybersecurity if you want to be confirmed with the ISO SAE 21434. So what you get with Cyrus Academy is a fitted training specialized on the role that you have um, with a certification 
and an independent certification partner. And uh, we said that basic that we created, the ACP framework um, is now on a very good level. As we said, we created this with one partner, a couple of uh, hours we, we spent uh, overnight um, to do it. Um, but we know that this is not a static status. We know that we have to continue developing this. And um, we want to invite everybody um, to join us. As you see, there are already some big companies, automotive suppliers, with uh, a lot of um, yeah, technical expertise, uh, worldwide active, uh, who already joined us and working actively on the ACP framework. Um, those are the companies who said, for us, the one-fits-all version is not enough anymore. And with those partners, we create the next level of the ACP framework. And members of the ACP framework um, benefit from um, reduced prices on our trainings, for example, and the certification as well. They are part of this spearhead of establishing cybersecurity competences and can network within these framework. And of course, last but not least, these framework is free of charge. So if you're taking part, there's nothing you have to pay. You just can take part of it like you do in, in ISO standardization groups. This is the, the main idea. We said we want to continue. Um, the industry comes together in, uh, in the ISO standard. Why not also do this in the ACP framework? All right. Um, if you say, yes, it's a good idea. I want to do a training, but actually I don't have the time. Also here we are working on a solution which is partly already in place. So we are developing um, yeah, on-demand videos, education videos of five to 15 minutes for dedicated topics which are also available on our platform. For example, you, you knew an approach, you are new in a project, you need to create a cybersecurity plan, but you actually do not know what you have to do. You know, know the requirements from the standard, but how to implement that, we would have a dedicated video for you. Or you want to read again or hear again, actually, what is the UNR 156? We have a video for that. So for everyone who needs individual knowledge for specific topics, we are also working a solution and as I said, partly already available. But that is a side note. Let's come back shortly to our ACP framework, our idea behind, and to show you a short success story. So with one of our customers, we are currently implementing the complete level zero until level two, depending on the roles for the whole organization, which also included, uh, and that's for us, um, something where we are, we are, we are very proud an awareness promotion teaser, so a video about cybersecurity, which was mandatory to each and every person working in that company. So a few thousand person watched our trailer or our teaser because all of them need to get aware cybersecurity is coming. And for all engineers, a dedicated awareness video to, yeah, to bring everybody in the same page that everybody knows, okay, there is something happening right now. And all the knowledge, all the things we discussed, it's also again, not least Steve's part, we right. put together. <laughs> as, uh, as you might know, um, academy trainings are, are not the, the thing that we do 24 hours a day. We are doing consulting and uh, these experience we have packed into a book with more than 450 pages. Um, explaining the ISO SAE 21434. Uh, when you have go through it, you know that it's just 100 pages and uh, it says you have to do something but not exactly what to do. So with that book, we explain and give you hints um, how to interpret the standard, how to learn about um, the implementation and uh, to develop a holistic understanding of it. And I'm pretty I'm happy to tell you that uh, the first 10 trainings that will booked after this webinar will get this book um, for free. So be quick. <laughs> all right. And now again, you might mention, I might think, okay, that's all good stuff what you're talking, but my management uh, doesn't listen to me. 
also here we have something in our portfolio which we yeah applied now seven or eight times in different companies um a short session about cybersecurity so the fundamental principles of automotive cybersecurity for executive and managers executives and managers so the idea is to put or bring together the most crucial parts the parts of cybersecurity which has the highest impact to organizations into a three-hour session or two-hour session with a dedicated one-hour question and answer session for executive management so that they get a feeling what might need me to be done to discuss okay we have this situation in the standard we have this situation in our company what should we what should we do what would be the next step so for everyone who needs to convince their management and that's three hours and that's possible for everyone in the end we have a dedicated solution to show the risks and the potential solutions to your management and of course you can also find more on our website for that and yeah last but not least um, feel free to look at our website where we have everything in place so our own uh, dedicated yeah, platform, our demand videos, our live trainings, the examination. And again, as a special, we promote, give some voucher for all trainings until the next three weeks, two and a half weeks. So with the voucher, you get 30% off for all trainings. And to close our whole story today, just to make you aware, Cyber Cyrus Consulting is not only doing training academy that's one part now but our main part of course is consulting leveraging cyber security for organizations for projects managing cyber security projects or even implementing cyber security in technical solutions and the second part or third part third pillar since we mentioned the iso in the unr we also can help you to prepare for audits and assessment and the type approval to ensure that yeah the sales ban will not affect to you or implement you or you cannot affect it by a sales ban or any missing compliance and yeah that's it for today from our side so feel free to contact us in case of any questions any any thoughts or if anything you want to discuss with us right if you want to join the acp framework or even uh, have ideas for a deep dive uh, that you want to perform, go in contact with us and uh, we will help you out. All right. And that brings us then to question from your side and we already got one. And um, what is about the ISO PASS 5112? It's a good question. So the ISO PASS 5112, it's a standard, it's a PASS standard. Um, how to audit cybersecurity? This one is created by the same group who created the 21434. It's currently under creation and it's expected to be finished, um, if I'm not wrong, in Q3 that year. So the focus is auditing against the 21434 and publishing date probably this year. But we need to be aware this is a PASS standard. So a PASS standard is made by the industry, controlled by the ISO, but it's actually only an industry solution. It can become later to a pure ISO standard, but so far it's only yeah, a proposed solution. All right, then another question. Is any pure work experience uh, necessary for taking part in the level one uh, foundation training? Um, actually not. I would say some basic understanding how the automotive world, world works. So you should be aware what our requirement is. You should be aware um, yeah, that standards and regulations exist. Um, but in the end, if you're, if you're familiar, a bit familiar, or if you're working in this industry or in a similar industry, um, then there are no, no further preconditions. And we also have participants from different directions. We have engineers, we have managers, but also purchasing and sales members are joining the training because they need to bring that in the contract and they are not technical experts anyway. So, um, yeah, let's say it's a starting point for everyone. And if you're working in that industry, even if you're new in the industry, you should be able to follow. 
All right. Are there any further questions around around the call? Maybe one one question we also get frequently asked is is it necessary to pass level one before you're taking level two? Um let's say it's not mandatory. If you are already working in the automotive industry since a long time, you're familiar with cybersecurity and maybe also function safety and related topics, um, then you're able then you are able to follow, but without having any further experience in that way, it might be challenging because some basics of the level one are assumed um, that people know, but that's actually, yeah, for everyone with experience, that's not an issue. And we get a new, another question. Is the ASPICE new working groups for cybersecurity mapped to ISO SE 21434? And why is it a special working group for ASPICE? Um, let's answer it step by step. So the, there's no dedicated mapping so far. So the main parts of the ASPICE extension is regarding supplier management. Here I would say it adds additional information to the ISO. It's a good input. Um, the other part is about the development requirements, elicitation, verification, validation, et cetera. I would say from my personal point of view, all of these aspects, if you're already working towards ASPICE and to 21.434, there's limited added value. Another part is a risk assessment with partly technical risks and project risks, but also here the ISO is quite good. So it provides you further ideas and it helps you maybe also in some kind of interpretation, finding solutions, but it's not that it's a new rocket science and there's no dedicated mapping of that or not, not made so far, but you can make it and it's quite easy. And the question why there's a special working group for ASPICE um, I think I can answer honestly. So Automotive Spice in principle was made or is driven by Intax with the help of a lot of different companies, uh, big companies, small companies. Now this ASPICE extension was made by I think four or five companies. Um, most of them were consulting companies, so there were no big player officially involved. And yeah, what the motivation, the motivation behind, I'm not sure. As I said, it provides added value in some regard, but actually it's just an extension, so it will not become of ASPICE in general, of the ASPICE compliance. And yeah, I think the motivation was maybe in some regard getting attention, sharing own ideas, but let's say it was, in, it was done independent from the ISO standard. And my colleagues are also part of the ISO working group in Germany. And also there, the, the sense of that or the benefit of that was discussed. And yeah, let's say there also the ISO group is not convinced that the effort behind that added so much added value um, yeah, that it was worth to do it. But as I said, it's a valuable input. I do not say that the work was bad, um, but yeah, maybe it was a bit of, more than more than needed but that's my personal opinion all right i think we have two more questions yes um will a csms certification be audited based on 21434 or 5112 or uh, i think it's automotive cybersecurity management system by vda okay we need to distinguish here with we have the unr 155 here you have a certification for the company or COC, Certificate of Compliance. And then for each vehicle type, you have a type approval. So if you get a certification for a cybersecurity management system, which means the Certificate of Compliance, then this will be covered by the UN regulation where the VDA book provides you support, which listed actually the questions which can be interpreted in different ways, but the VDA book is related to the UNR. If you get it audited against the ISO 21434, which is also an audit on company level, this will be done in future based on the 5112. So the 5112, maybe I can also shortly explain that or paint that. Uh, so we have the UNR 
155. Here we have the so-called COC, Certificate of Compliance, which is applicable to companies. And we have the type approval, which is applicable for each vehicle type. So one time for the organization and then several times for the different vehicle type. And here we have the, the, um, yeah, the book from the VDA. And for the ISO, SAE 21434, we have an audit for processes, which is on organizational level. And we have an assessment, which is on project level. And for this audit on organizational level, there, the 5112 will support. But actually, it's still under development. All right. Then we have another question. Is it possible to directly register for the level one certification exam without the training in case the person is familiar with the basics of cybersecurity and automotive? Um, it's actually not. That's also given by the by TÜV that they want to have a certificate of attendance for doing the certification. So that's actually a precondition from TÜFES independent certification body. And actually you do not know the content of the training and content is not only the ISO standard, it goes also into towards verification, validation, the product life cycle, the whole ecosystem. So we are not teaching the ISO standard, we are teaching how what cybersecurity means in the automotive context. Well, of course, the ISO is a basic, but we provide you more knowledge than just explaining the standard. And then who is the third party that is auditing a CSMS of OEMs as required by the UNR? Are there already certified companies for that? So these are, this is then, so the certificate, again, to distinguish, we have the certificate of compliance. So this must be some kind of an independent certification body like DECRA, TÜV, they can do that. And you have on the other side, the type approval, which is part of the homologation. So the homologation, which includes everything from your fuel consumption up to checking the brakes, et cetera. And there, the type approval for cybersecurity, which checks if the processes which are checked here if they are applied to the different vehicle types. This is then part of the homologation. So there are companies in place, but they, those companies are defined by the respective, um, no need to find the right word, yeah, agency for traffic in the specific country. Um, so these are defined more or less by, uh, let's say, by the government, simply said and they can then do this COC. So it's not possible for a private company like us um, to do that, but we can help you to support. And actually we were involved in several um, assessments or audits so far and get an, you have an idea at least what is expected then from the respective certification body. All right, are there any other questions? Shall we get quite a lot? That's quite good. So if there are also no further questions, as I said, feel free to contact us, write to me, write to Steve, or also can write an email at, at to academy at cyrusconsulting.com if you have any questions to talk out. The certification, the ACP framework, if you want to join, if you want to get more information about our training, all your further requests, feel free to contact us. And yeah, thanks for the attention. Thanks a lot. Stay safe and see you at Zaris Academy. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye bye. <laughs>